Hi, I'm Renell Golden, and you're listening to the Movie Making Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Atlas VPN. Everyone, today we are here with Mike Burns, director and editor. Welcome, Mike. How are you doing today? Hello, I am doing amazing. How are you? I'm um, uh, good, good. A little crazy, but I'm doing great, and I'm very happy to have you here talking with me today. Um, and we're going to talk about your filmmaking journey. You are also a teacher and a few other things. You've written a couple things. You, you kind of do it all when it comes to filmmaking. So uh, I like to take people through their lives because I love people to learn from everyone's experience. So when did you realize that you were going to be a filmmaker? Um. Wow. I don't even know. I, I don't remember. <laughs> it's, it's just vague, vague memories of childhood at that point. Um, <laughs> but I suppose the first thing I wanted to do was to be a voice actor. When I was a kid, I I, I loved like just making voices and watching cartoons and oh, thinking I love that. that's got to be the greatest job ever. And yeah. uh, I remember um, like, um, uh, and a, a movie that really inspired me was for it, it's funny, but it, it, it's true. Was Mrs. Doubtfire? Oh, are you um, serious? Because yeah. he changed characters, or or and his voice, he changed up his voice, or well, it, I think it it was twofold. Really, it's because um, my parents were actually going through a separation around the time um, I saw that movie, and oh. it was almost therapeutic, and it, it it created like an emotional sort of realization when I watched this of how profound it was affecting me, Aww. and uh, that's when I really kind of thought I want to like I, like I you know I I stepped out and I identified like what it was doing to me and i was like this filmmaking thing this is amazing and so of course like yeah robin williams was always a big inspiration because like yeah the voice thing that stuck with me too but yeah the profound nature of just what the movie was that really that really stuck with me and and how it it had a great message at the end about i hope i put this correctly but like broken families and that yeah there could still be a happy ending where everyone feels love and connected and you know, moves on in their own way, but still stays together. Um, I don't know. I, I remember that movie too. And I, I took away just a really warm kind of feeling from it in the end. So, yeah. Yeah. How, how to present something that's difficult, how to present something that's hard, even yeah. hard to talk about. And especially for kids. And as a kid had seen that, you know, that's absolutely what I took away from it. So it was very positive And it was like, I mean, melancholy, is like my favorite feeling. It's, it's, it's okay. That's a really good word for that movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Fast forward a little bit. Um, what was your first movie? Um, that I made? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so fast forward, uh, let's see. So I ended up, um, befriending, um, a friend of mine named Ron Dennison who had a camera and he was filming everything. So, so uh, I just tagged along with him, and we were lit- he literally filming every experience. And oh wow, we, yeah. And growing up in Alaska, it would pretty much be like camping adventures and parties and and uh, hikes and oh, all. Oh wow, stuff. you're from and Alaska. Then, yeah, born and raised. I've only been out of Alaska now for just three years. In oh no Florida. wonder you love Florida. It's a little <laughs> Florida's warmer, okay. here, right? <laughs> It's a little bit different. Yeah. A little yeah, we, different. Yeah. Oh, that's drive. amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, we ended up, uh, we were in high school at a, a school called Rochelle, and there was a, a, a film program that we both did. He was kind of leading the film program in a sense. And uh, then we started editing, uh, learned how to edit with him. And then, um, and then we just sort of, Took it, took it on as a production company, started making nice. commercials and, and things like that. Music oh, videos. Oh, serious. Yeah, and then started getting a little bit more serious. Yep. Yeah, oh, a little wow. Bit and then um, my uh, my father-in-law said that, you know, hey, why don't you do a story about the skateboard park? And then I was thinking, the skateboard park, that doesn't really sound that interesting. But, it um, is, though. It, yeah. it, well, it is. It really was, because, like, yeah. I looked into it more, and I remember, like, kids, like, doing a lot of civic-related things growing up, and I didn't really pay attention to it, because I wasn't a really a skateboarder at the time, but oh, right, I looked right. 
Yeah. And I looked into it and I was like, this is an amazing civics lesson. Um, and I, the next day I went to, um, the frontiersman, which is the local newspaper and, uh, went through their archive and it was all physical archive, not like a digital archive. Like now oh, that's and, cool. Those exist. I spent, <laughs> yeah, those exist. So I spent the entire day, um, looking for any articles related to that story and then I was just like an investigator. Any lead I found to that story, any person, uh, I I was just relating to the article. And then I kind of put the story together with the the news articles. And oh, then wow. um, with Ron as sort of like my my cinematographer, we got a hold of all these people, did interviews, and then made the documentary out of it called Breath of Fresh Air. And uh, so that took that took a number of years to actually finish. And then when it was done. I was able to get it out there. I got a distribution deal for it. Um, wow. Horrible distribution deal, by the way. But, you but got I got one. it out there. That's huge. <laughs> yeah. At, at then, what? 18 years old? 19, maybe? 21, 22. 20? Okay. Yeah. This, is just a, this is just a little bit after uh, the high school adventure. It's um, still and, amazing. Yeah. And getting it out there it, and creating it and finding like the story within it, because I didn't realize how difficult, like not, not having edited documentary was going to be to do it. Um, oh, right. Actually a feature length. Um, so it took a little while to piece the story together until I was happy with it. Have you uh, made other documentaries? Did that become like a no. mainstay of your skill set or no? Mm -hmm. Um, I've dabbled with it, uh, and I, I teach it actually right now um, for mini doc. But that's the only documentary I've ever made. And then from there, I, I put all of my focus towards uh, narrative features. You know, I I actually believe in my heart. Narrative is probably easier in in the sense of weaving a story. I absolutely is, agree with that yeah. because it's, it's, <laughs> you can define it so much easier. Like whereas. Like you, know you can find go. a story. Yeah, exactly. It's a clear path. Whereas like a real story, it's like you've got to you gotta consider all the perspectives in mind and what footage do you have available and who can you interview? So you can only tell so much of a story if it's yeah. real based on what you have and what you can get as far as your assets can be. It's true. So. I've been asked to do them through the years, and I always get just a little gung shy because there's even legal realities that come with making a documentary and and those can kind of be overwhelming because it can kind of be a hit job if you're only presenting one side and you're telling a very real personal story or something from like some event or someone's life and that yeah. scares me i'm like i don't want to be that person when there's always two sides to every story so i shy away from them but oh a hundred percent especially if there's like any and there's going to be because it's the nature of storytelling if there's a True. conflict and if there's a conflict yes. between multiple people it's hard not to lean a little bit one way or the other and stay perfectly down center without like ruffling some feather, feathers. So. Yeah, it's true. 100%. It's true. So you moved on to narrative filmmaking. Um, what uh, has been some of your, your good experiences with filmmaking? What films have you made that you're just like, oh, I got everything right? And what are some things maybe you learned from other films? Um, so my first feature film, I, I, I look at it like, like film school, um, because a lot of lofty expectations going into it and then learning the realities of what it is and what True. you can be capable of doing, but also like the good hearted nature of people. Like I found it way easier to make a feature film in Alaska versus here in Florida. Like it's not even close to be honest with you. It, are um, people more the, open to you people out there. Are way more open, absolutely. Oh, wow. And it's a, it's kind of those. It's one of those things where it's like, um, hey, can I can I use your place to to film a scene for a movie? Yeah, you know, it's the, scary. The reaction here. is is almost like, yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. What else do you need? You know. Oh. So in Alaska, like I was, I could, per, I I rarely heard no, like very rarely, and it spoiled me. It spoiled yeah. me so much. Like I had. Jeez. I had an office for about seven years that I never paid for. I oh, had, wow. yeah, I mean, I had everything I needed because like everyone was so excited and willing to help and it was oh, all wow. for the art of it. You know, it was, it wasn't like, Hey, I want to do this selfish thing. It's like, Hey, can we make something amazing together? And everyone was always very warm and receptive to and it. And on board. Do you think it's yeah. because you, maybe you had grown up in that area and you were well connected and, or is it just I mean, truly like a different frame of mind that the people have, a different pace and rhythm? 
It could be a number of those things, but I, I do think that like there is a there is an amazing arts community in Alaska, and like like when I did the documentary, I didn't know that, and it really wasn't there yet. But by the time oh, I got wow. to the first narrative feature, then like a, a, a huge arts community just blossomed. And so um, aligning yourself with all these people, I mean, we had over 150 volunteers for that first feature film. Oh, and, wow. And th- like at one point we, were, we had this lofty goal for our, 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 uh, our budget. And it was just a lot of unrealistic expectations that we set for ourselves. But right. once reality kicked in and it was now or never sort of mentality and the people that stuck with us knew like what the expectations were, then we got even more people to come on board because we didn't. It was just like, hey, we're making a movie. Do you want to jump on? You know, we're not going to pay you, yeah. but it's going to be really fun. <laughs> and then everyone was just like, yes, let's go. Nobody else is making a feature film or asking us to join them. So why not? And it was fun. It was a it was a great learning experience. It was fun, and uh, it, like I said, it was film school. Did you and, end up getting that film edited and distributed and put out into the world too? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, our distribution deal came up not long ago, so we're gonna self distribute it, re self distribute it soon. But yeah, it went to some oh, film festivals. Cool. We got went to Beverly Hills Film Festival, got Best Actor award from there. Nice. Um, a bunch of yeah, won a bunch of other awards. Visited some film festivals, so it did pretty good. It did pretty good. We were really happy with it. It, it came out. It came out exactly kind of how we wanted it. And um, yeah, I mean, it was nothing but positive experiences from it that I could take away to the next things I did. So that that um, is pretty damn cool. Um, what is like? You know, we all we all are making films these days because technology has changed. And you've been at this long enough that you know, and 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 you've also come to Florida. So what are, are kind of some things you could share with people in starting this process? Because obviously the number one issue is budget, but we also have crew getting locations, like just bringing the whole thing together. Um, what advice might you share? Um, I would say like, you know, it's important. I mean, for me, like, like it's interesting now that I'm teaching, like I never went to like a film school. I, I, I've had some you know, went through some courses and like a class in high school. Me too. Like, same kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, but I'm able to bring that experience over and stuff I like to say is like, you know, the film school, it's, it's great. And it'll help you set you in the right track. Like I wish I went to film school because <laughs> then everything would have been condensed and I would have had a clear, like, okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Maybe a little faster if you had the drive, faster, right? Yeah. yeah. Like that, <laughs> Me too. Like that, that first feature film was like, like from script to screen. I mean, eight years something like that it took a really long time to do oh wow, wow. But the biggest thing was like like i never gave up i never just said yeah it's not gonna work i just kept going with it and wow. kept pushing like my co-director dean i was always pushing be like ah oh, we got this we got you know it didn't matter like you know all the people would have quit and some of them did because it was just like ah, i gotta move or you know things are happening right. in life. it happens just yeah kept going and eventually we we achieved it but one thing i would say is like money money doesn't make movies like money just gets you the things that you need in order to get the things that you think you need that you wouldn't otherwise get without money right um, but the reality is there's a lot of people out there that have gear that want to make a movie. There's a lot of people out there that can do the things that you need to do that are waiting for projects to come up that they can jump on board. Now um, I'm looking for and, those people. I want to meet all of them. <laughs> I love and, those people and I help them, right? It's two-way street. So It is. It's a two-way street. And the thing is, like, when you have a project that's worthwhile, and that's, like, really important, is, is making a project that is worthwhile in terms of, like, this could be a great festival movie, or this could be the type of movie that is going to work really well in this niche, and, and something that we're all going to be proud of, that we can put on a reel and all these things. Then you'll notice, like, as long as you're making something of quality, um, people will flock to it. And as long as your intentions are pure, like, I, I've never, like, my goals has never been to make a bunch of money to make a movie. I my, honestly I had to shift my goals because it was once I need to make a movie, I need to make a movie. And then once I did that, then I noticed like, oh, wow, I'm getting lazy now because my goal was too small. Like I did. Oh, I, I, okay. So then my goal now is unachievable. My goal now is I need to make the greatest movie ever made. Now, Ah. Film is art. Art is subjective. So I think it's True. impossible to cre- to do that. But in my head, I had to sort of train myself to think that way. That way, 
I'm never going to settle. I'm never going to get lazy with it. I'm never going to just right. accept what I create. I'm always going to try to grow. Um, so that's kind of the goal I set out for myself. And it's 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 just my own goal. It's I'm not I'm not pushing it against anybody else's. It's film. a great it's, goal, though. You're, you're making yeah. movies that matter for you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. And I I do know people that, um, and this always amazes me. They make. I've known people that have made like ten shorts in one year, and you right. know, and I've seen their work. I don't want to comment. And you know, obviously, I have stuff I've done that I'm proud of, and stuff I've done that I'm like, oh, I could have done it better. But mm -hmm. I really want to do things that kind of have heart and are, are good in the end. And what I'm learning is to pace myself. And so I'm not keeping up with all of these other filmmakers that think the quantity of their credits define their success, because that isn't necessarily mm -hmm. true. It's what happens with that film while you're making it and after you make it. And that's a tough lesson to learn because, you know, sometimes I get, I think what you call it is imposter syndrome, like, oh, because I'm not mm -hmm. knocking out those credits one after the other, I may not be who people expect me to be. And, and that's something that really doesn't matter. What matters is that what I'm doing is meaningful and good. And so those are things, one of the reasons I started this podcast is because I hope that up and coming filmmakers are listening and, you know, can learn from everybody's experience. Cause like you have a wealth of knowledge to share and you are living proof that you can knock out these meaningful projects and keep growing in your career. And your path may not be what everyone, the typical expected path, but you are getting in good places and you're proud of your work. Yeah. And I, th I think you just said something that's that's really important is like, yeah, some people feel like they need to hurry up and and make movies regardless of maybe the output of it. And that, like for me, I'll never like it, 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 it sucks for maybe other people involved with it. But like usually I'll edit my own films. Um, actually, I've edited every single film I've done. I'm not going to do it. Oh, wow. Forward. Because I uh, I, I awesome. get too critical. It, it it is, but it isn't because um, some films have taken too long. They just taken too long because for whatever reason there is something about it that's not that might not be working that isn't to a standard that I set for myself. Or oh, for I have one of those in the can. Yeah. I get it. And so it's like you kind of have to sit and wait, and sometimes it takes a while for it to flush out the way you want it and yeah. it's not affecting you in, in the emotional capacity that you're hoping until you're fiddling with it one day and then it, it just it something strikes it something inspires it and it works and then it's like okay this is it this is that yeah uh, because i don't want to release anything that i would think think sucks or that i would think would fail be a failure like and yeah. I, I, that's also that's a good thing and a bad thing though it's like you know, am I afraid to fail? Am I afraid to, you know, go through this whole process? And is that limiting me as an artist? You know, could I just accept something that maybe is not meeting my standards, but is still okay with society? So, I mean, there's certainly something that you have to of, ask yourself uh, all that. That's difficult. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is. It it's is. like, some, but that's why it's important to also lean on other people, like, and have, have a team. And, have a team and people that you trust, people that you know will give you honest feedback. People yes. that just don't say, yeah, it's good. Like if I ask my mom, hey, what do you think? And she's always going to say, it's really good. I, I love, love it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody that rarely gives me compliments that will only kind of look on the other side because I think that's really important to have. Yes. And it's also, uh, you know, it humbles you too Humbling. at the same time. Yeah. 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 You, don't, you don't want to be told how great you are. That's that is not a helpful. good point. So, Use your internet without limitations. Atlas VPN offers military-grade encryption and data leak protection, keeping you and your family safe online, no matter where you are. Available on iOS, Android, Windows, and other devices. For less than $2 a month, Atlas VPN stands above the rest. Get an extra six months of Atlas VPN for free when you select a two-year plan. Use the Movie Making Podcasts affiliate link to sign up. Go to get.atlasvpn.com slash moviemakingpod. That's G-E-T dot A-T-L-A-S VPN dot com slash moviemakingpod. 
What are you working on um, right now? Do you have a new film in the works or one in the can you're editing? Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. Like uh, the the last feature I did was a while ago, actually. It was in 2016 when we filmed it. It wasn't released until 2019. We took our sweet time with that one. Oh, cool. um, but that's currently on Tubi and Amazon. Um, it's called Peaks and Valleys. Peaks and um, Valleys. What's it about? It's about uh, a man in seclusion in the wilderness of Alaska that is uh, kind of doing his own thing, kind of a mystery. Think of like a westerny Clint Eastwood type character. A little bit and of then, a thriller or suspense. Yeah, definitely suspense on. thriller. Oh, and then neat. a plane flies okay. over his cabin, right over his lake, and dumps a bag. And he goes oh. down to the lake, looks at the bag, and the bag starts thrashing around. He gets into his <laughs> canoe, goes over, and he finds a an puppy. Body of a of a naked, beaten, battered girl. So oh gosh! He her back up to his cabin, and uh, she wakes up, and she's wondering what's going on. He's wondering who is she, and oh, then wow. we all start wondering why is he there? What happened to this girl? And how are they going to escape the situation where they're stranded? And we're trying to figure out what's going on. And oh, so it's a bunch of questions. Yeah. And wow, so, that would have been a good one to film during the pandemic. Because it right sounds before, yeah, like it it's, been. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's pretty cool though. That is cool. Where, um, where can people like, you know, learn more about you? Um, right now, uh, I suppose, um, IMDB is a good place and, uh, I'm, I, I'm in the, in the process of putting together a, a website so I can get all my stuff up there. Um, you can find that particular movie on Tubi. Um, currently, we're working on um, two different scripts that we plan on filming one this year, um, later in this year, called Whispers of the North. Um, and it's uh, it's kind a of a, an autobiography thriller? about my niece. It's kind of a thriller. Oh. It's, it's, it's a dramatic thriller type one. Um, very hard in the drama category about uh, just a broken family and a girl that's kind of overcoming her own disability while trying to navigate her own situation. Oh, wow. Um, Sounds and good. She, drawn to alaska it's kind of the opposite sort of thing she's drawn to alaska wanting to leave a bad situation in florida um and so yeah we plan on filming that later in the wow. year and so i plan on like teaming up with some of the students here at first institute and um some of the filmmakers i've met since i've been here in florida and uh nice yeah. that sounds really cool and and you're probably inspired for the leaving florida part no i'm just kidding <laughs> It sounds I do really miss good. mountains. I miss it, mountains and snow. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. there's so much to love here, but there's so much to love out in the rest of the world too, as far as terrain goes. So you don't realize um, how effective nature is to your psyche until you don't have enough. Yeah, of it. I need water where I live. Water and forest and critters, lots of critters. I just I would just love a mountain in the background. I mean, there you honestly, go. It's, it's, there you go. Yeah, the terrain is boring. You gotta <laughs> you gotta put boring. one in the window. Just you know, get a something and put it up. Never. I don't know where I'm going with it. Never mind. <laughs> well, I always thought it was weird that like every Alaskan house you go into out there, they have a big picture of a of a mountain on their wall, and it's like you have a window. Just look out the window. But yeah. here, yeah. Oh, how sense. funny! That is funny. <laughs> That's cute, though. Um, so, tell me about the, your your teaching. When did you start teaching, and and what's that like, and all that good stuff? Yeah. So I kind of just fell into it because I was. Uh, I was doing freelance um, acting coaching and uh, video editing. And um, so I saw an opening for an instructor at First Institute. And I love it. I applied. And, uh, you know, the, the sort of entry uh, test was uh, they, they said, you know, come up with basically anything you can do for five minutes in front of the program directors. And then that'll be sort of like your entry level test. And oh, so wow. I just made. I made them act for me. So I was being their acting coach. And oh, that's uh, so, brilliant. How fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then so I got the position after that. I started working on campus. Um, and now I'm actually doing IDL, which is interactive distance learning. So I uh, I do virtual teaching where right now I've got 17 students all over the country. Um, nice. That, yeah, right now we're we're learning about story structure and uh, we're in the short film program. Um, and so we're going to do that for about nine weeks and then go on to other courses. I so, love yeah. it. That's very cool. And, and, you know, all of my interaction with students from your school, as I was telling you before, has, it's been very positive. So oh, it's, um, it's, it's a great school. It's, it's definitely, I, I would recommend it. I like it. So anyway, yeah, we won't know, talk about the other schools around here. 
<laughs> that's right. Let's, yeah. You know, it, it, what's cool, what I what I really honestly do like about it is it's only an 11-month program. Um, you get everything that you need right out of it. And the whole purpose is to get the students right into entry-level positions for the industry. So Yeah, um, they're not wasting no, do, time on other Exactly. It's, it's like things. a trade school. We, we just teach them what they need to know in order yeah. to get right into it and be competent enough to start. Yes, so, so that's the it, it's a good thing. Um, so do you have um, any projects you're kind of, uh, well, besides the one you just told me about, what I guess what I want to ask is what would be kind of like a, a dream project of yours that you do in the future? Um, I feel like I'm on that path right now, honestly. Um, I've been working ever since Peaks and Valleys. I've, I've been teamed up with uh, my executive producer, Chuck Baird, and um, Peaks and Valleys did very, very well on Tubi. Tubi is a, a fantastic place for independent films right now. I love it's, it. Yeah, I have a few things it, it, there. It's awesome. Oh, it, it does so well. And hopefully you, it continues to do well for indies. Did you uh, self-distribute on Tubi or did you yeah. go through like Film Hub or? Well, yeah, Film okay. Hub. We've, we've gone through Film Hub. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like Film Hub. People are always asking me and I'm surprised we don't hear about it more, but I've had, you know, good success ha going through them and getting things placed, but, um, yeah, yeah. There's, often there's quicker good... than through my regular distributor on my other feature films. So sure. Um, yeah. I've gone that route too, with the other features. And honestly, I, it's not even close in terms of what I've made from self distribution through film hub versus direct. Yeah. It's like not even close. Honestly, I've, I've never made back a budget of a film um, up until self distribution through film hub and oh, not only wow. made back the budget, but like made back the budget more than 10 plus. It's, yeah. It's oh, that's, that's great to hear. Yeah, that is yeah, good. I'm, we should maybe uh, tell them, you know, we need to do a commercial for them or something. <laughs> That's sure. fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but that really set, set it up to where the executive producer was very happy. So um, getting financing for the next film and then getting I'm getting hired to do another film that he's actually writing um, that uh, we'll probably do early next year and kind of continue love it. that. And um, the idea is kind of to do lower budget, but kind of high quality um, and uh, and smaller cast is kind of the idea. And uh, yeah. and just put it up and just keep going. I love it. I love it. So um, when we're working and, and I'm probably in a, a similar um, boat as you are. So when we're working at lower budgets, what are some things you could recommend to filmmakers to even though it's lower budget, we could still have that high budget feel. Um, well, for me, like I'm not a, I'm not very technical. I'm, I'm just, I mean, with editing, yes, I'm, I'm very particular with editing and very particular with like music. I'm, I'm particular with those things, but those are important. Like, not, yeah, yeah, but I'm not really a camera guy. I'm not really like uh, on on the other side of the lens. Like I'm not like uh, I'm not overly thinking about things like my my frame and like my frame size and things like that. I mean, I do now. I've always I put a lot more um, credence into it. And uh, so You're the biggest thing for me is pre production and casting, casting, casting. I was going to um, say, you're probably the a, a director for actors. So you're, yeah. you're concerned with performance and the DP 100%. deals with the look. 100%. That, that's, okay. that's my MO right now is I, I align myself with a very, very strong cinematographer. Um, I storyboard most of it, like unless there's oh, things good. that can be a little bit flexible. And I make sure we have a very, very solid ground uh, base that we can uh, start working from. I like and that. Yeah. Create a very strong foundation and uh, get the, the strongest performers as possible for those roles um, that can really take it to the next level. And teaming up with a very strong cinematographer that has the eye for it. Um, that's always been a really good combination for me is, but how do nothing... you find them? You're a, a good DP. Like how, how do you select one or have you just been blessed like to find one and you teamed up together on a bunch of projects? I, I it's, it's a combination of just putting myself out there and kind of getting lucky. It's like, um, the first cinematographer I aligned with Mackenzie Banbury, like we kind of grew up around each other into, okay. uh, getting into film. So, um, he, you know, we were kind of just bugging each other about stuff. And then uh, <laughs> he he actually, for proper bench, he was just like, hey, why are you guys just waiting around for money? I'll film it. Let's just do it. Oh, and wow. Like, he, he's done Very solid cool. work and he had the equipment. So it was like, heck yeah. 
And then so we did it because he was willing to do it for free. And then it gets us all the equipment. And that's uh, amazing. For Peaks and Valleys, I met that cinematographer in a line um, for submitting films to like an open film night. And uh, saw his work. I was like, oh, he's really good. He went to film school in New York um, and then hired him pretty quick after that. He just had a strong background. And so now it's just kind of like eyeballing who's really good. Um, do they like the material and are they willing to, you know, take the position? Uh, another thing would be like, do they have their own gear? And so I have to start assessing like, okay, what, 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 how can I get maximum benefit from this yeah. you know, cinematographer based on their ability, based on what they have for gear? What do I need? You know, then you start considering your budgeting. And we're, when we're talking about like smaller, um, budgets, then you, you really got to maximize what you can get from a cinematographer that, that does have their own gear or somebody else. Yeah. Cause sometimes there's some gear. gears they won't throw in, uh, mm-hmm. for yeah. your budget. They'll be like, I got it. I can't because it's, you know, so expensive or something, but how how important is it that the people that join your team actually love your story as much as you do or darn close? Cause that's something I, I talk about a lot with people when I'm putting together a film. I, I don't ever remember like aligning myself with anybody that said anything remotely negative about anything I've done. So, I mean, to me, like for me personally, if somebody was negative about the story, that probably wouldn't really, would, would probably bother me a little bit, but. Yeah, um, or just there for the paycheck, but they don't really care. That's that's something that. Oh, they're not going to be alive me. with me if they care about the paycheck. That's for sure. Yeah. And <laughs> okay, there you the go. The <laughs> thing is, like, I'm very transparent about that, too. It's like, if we're getting into a low budget film, right. then it's going to be, this is, this is what it is. The back end could be great. Like, like. For a lot of like uh, like the last film we did, the back end for Peaks and Valleys was better than than the paycheck they would have gotten up front. And so f- for those that elected to get paid up up front, got less than those who elected to get paid oh, on wow. the back. Oh wow! Um, so That's interesting. It's, but you you just don't know that. I mean, obviously you don't you can't anticipate that it's going to do as well as it might have done, which we didn't anticipate. Gotcha. Um, uh, but that's just one of the I, realities. Yeah. yeah, I love that you kind of have the perspective like which i probably need to be a sponge right now and learn from this cuz i'm i'm working on something really important to me and i'm freaking out because we're trying to raise just a little bit but i love that you have the perspective don't let the budget stop you from doing what no. you need to do so the trick to that is what being transparent with everyone this is our situation do you want to do it or don't you or like how do you oh, approach absolutely. that there, there is, there's always somebody that will say yes. Like there's no excuses anymore. There just isn't because there's, there's so many people that are just kind of waiting around for a job. Like there's, there's a lot of really talented people that aren't given a chance that would jump at, uh, like, and the thing is like, some people don't feel like, oh, I don't want to just ask people to work for cheap or work for free. Right. And it's like, well, why the hell not? Like if I, when I'm in certain positions and if I don't have anything going on and somebody says, hey, would you be interested in jumping on board with my project? I I would say, heck, yeah. Yeah, I usually I'm, say yes. I'm like, sure, I'm right there because I want I want to help them. And I think helping each other is a two way street. Yeah. Um, and especially when you have something of quality, when you have something that they yeah. can look at and believe in. I mean, if they're coming into it negatively, then it's like, well, why are you even here? Like, yeah. Why are you yeah. Like, How did the is- uh, pandemic affect you? Did you make any films during yeah. the pandemic or was it kind no. of rough? No, it it was really bad actually because oh. we had we had gotten we'd gotten back from a successful showing for Peaks and Valleys at the Julian Dubuque International Festival in Dubuque, Iowa. Right. And made great contacts um that set us off on a journey to start fundraising, um, getting developmental for this new feature film we were gonna do in Anchorage, Alaska. So we had actually oh. gotten an office space. We had Oh my got- god got an investor interest. We we had we were on the path to do a, a pretty large scale budget. Wow. And then the pandemic hit. And so all the investor interest just pulled back immediately because it's like we don't know what's going to happen with the pandemic. That's what we're happened. Not to us. Get in. Yeah. yeah. And then we were and then filming from there, in just... February and mm-hmm. um we were doing a proof of concept for the investor and it was in post and by the end of March everything was cl- shutting down. And he was like, sorry, guys, I I can't. I don't know what's going to happen because we had never experienced this type of thing in our country before. Yeah. And literally, we're like, oh, my God, what do we do? And um, at that point, 
just that past uh, December, January, my son and I had launched our production company because he's my co-writer. He writes with me. He's 23 now. But um, we're like, what the hell do we do? And by summer, we're like, this isn't going away. So we did end up writing a feature. We wrote it in nine days. We're like, well, what do we have that we could still film during the pandemic and be safe? And we have a bowling alley in our little town uh, in Oviedo. I'm in Oviedo. And um, I talked to the guy and I'm like, we wrote this script and could we film there? And we made it happen. We were one of the first union films even. And we made it happen with what we had, you know, the resources that we had. It was hell, though. It was... Oh, my God. (laughs) But, uh, you know, the movie, there are some things that kind of bug me about it because, like, you could not fill up the bowling alley with people because of the Mm -hmm. pandemic. So, you know, we had to play with some things and give up some things. But we did it. We did it. And it's beautiful to look at. Only only he and I know that, like, parts of the story aren't there because Mm -hmm. of the pandemic. So, <laughs> but it sucked. It really, that was my point. The pandemic sucked. We couldn't do anything we wanted to. So oh, yeah. I'm it really was glad rough. it's over, but it's not over, but I'm glad we're all able to get back to work and do what we love. So mm-hmm. we can almost get back to normal. Almost. Almost. It's the normal. new normal, which new um, normal. I'll take it. I will take yeah. it. It is so, better than what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have loved talking to you today. I mean, I I could probably talk to you for hours because I imagine there's a lot to learn that you have that you could share with us. So I hope that you'll come back and talk to us again. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I would love that. I would love it, like about your next project or anything you want. But I have this tradition. I always ask people five questions at the end of the show. And if you're ready, I would love to ask you five goofy questions. Let's do it. All right. Okay. This first one's really, really serious. So Mm. what is your favorite food? My favorite food? Oh, boy. Chicken cordon bleu. Oh, really? That's good. That's a good one. It is. Someone said meat once, and I'm still in shock over that. They're like anything that's meat. Just Meat's good. Meat's Meat's good, right? There you go. (laughs) Generally speaking, yeah. yeah, it gives you a lot of options there. So, okay, next <laughs> question. This one's more serious, but what is something non-film related but inspires you and motivates you in life? Ooh. You know, recently, probably my kids, I would say. Aww. Kids have been very inspiring. Yeah, I would Aww. say kids. How old are your babies? Well, I've got two twin girls that are three. Oh, wow. That's so cool. I've got one seven-year... And their names are Addison and Adeline. And then I have uh, my seven-year-old Phoenix. And I then love I have their my, names. Yeah. And then I have my 13-year-old River. River. That's a cool name, too. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is very yeah. cool. So cool. Yeah. And there are so little. I miss those days. Okay, next one. Number three. What is one thing that you have always dreamed of doing, but you have not done yet? Oh, man. Um, Dreamed of doing that I haven't done yet. You know, like running with the bulls or something. (laughs) Oh, I would never do that. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, stuff like, uh, I suppose, traveling overseas is something. I've only traveled through Canada to get to the, we call it the lower 48 from Alaska. that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, traveling overseas, You're traveling going somewhere like Europe or whatever. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. Always yeah. good thing. So, okay, here's here's a better one. Okay, number four. What is your favorite song to sing at the top of your lungs when you're driving in the car? Uh, <laughs> my favorite song. Um, I well, if I'm with my girls, we'll we'll sing like uh, the girls on the bus. Oh, um, I love that. Okay. that. Uh, That's let's a good see. one. There's uh, the floor is lava is a popular one. Uh, is my that son a kid Nick song? Likes any... What's that? Is that a kid song? I don't know it that. Yeah. Oh, floor, oh, can you lava. sing it now? I've never Danger. heard it. Danger. The floor. <laughs> it's like a YouTube thing. I'm, I'm not even sure. Oh, it's I like... love it. Okay. All right. God, I miss those days. All right. Last question. This one's really difficult for mm. filmmakers. All right. What is your favorite movie? Oh wow! Today, um, yeah, it, God, it changes. It changes like every day. You can pick a genre um, or something. Oh my! Well, my favorite genre would be like uh, like mystery thriller drama around that 
that chunk. I like psychological thrillers really good. Oh, me too. I love that. It, is oh, that Don what you Stark usually make? Yeah, I mean, it's like psychological mystery thriller. That's 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 my meat and potatoes. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, Donnie it. Darko to me was always like a very. It was always up there. I, yeah. I, I don't think my favorite, but Pulp Fiction's up there. Uh, okay. There's some love unusual aspects is up there. There's you so have many. a lot. Right. Yeah, so many. I could never pick one if you asked me. I wouldn't I wouldn't know. So I would be really mad that you like put me on the spot. But I yeah. do that to I mean, people right anyway. Now I'm already thinking like, oh, I should have said, you know, Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> like there's so many. Yeah, exactly. So all right. Well, Mike, I have loved talking to you today. I hope we get to talk again soon. And I wish you great success in your upcoming uh film shoot this year. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed our time. And I'd love to have you as a guest over at the school sometime. Oh my gosh, I totally want to do that. And I, I need PAs. Um, just plant yeah, the seed. We, we've got all the PAs. We've got them all. Oh my gosh. However many you need. Oh my God. Probably like a lot. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. It's done. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, you have a great day and we will talk soon. Sounds good. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Movie Making with Renelle Golden is brought to you by Samira Entertainment, supporting indie films and the filmmakers who create them. Stop by their website to learn more, www.samiraentertainment.com. That's www.samiraentertainment.com. You've been listening to Movie Making with Renelle Golden. Be sure to come back for our next episode where we bring you the people who make movies you love. Got a topic about filmmaking you want to hear on our podcast? Send us an email at moviemakingpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.